Carrie Ann here and it's Christmas so it's time to make something perhaps for the Christmas tree um, and I've got a code bug inside here that we've been able to program with a message that says Merry Christmas. This is Maggie from Red Ted Art and she's going to show you how to make this fabulous little craft design here so stick with me to see how to code it and then head over to her channel to see how you can make a beautiful beautiful Christmas pudding. This is a code bug. It's a small programmable device that includes some buttons and some LEDs that we're going to use in this project. To get one, you can visit codebug.co.uk and you can buy one from there and they're shipped all over the world. You can also use this website to program the device and that's what we're going to do today. Click on register and then complete the really simple form to create an account for yourself. You can create any username you like, you don't have to use your real name. Just make sure you have an email address that you do use quite often because you're going to need this to be able to verify your account. Once you've set up your account, you can start creating your own projects. So if you click on the create button at the top, you'll get this blank area in which to program your code bug. So I'm going to start by giving my project a name, I'm going to call it Christmas tree. Um, and then I'm going to start using the blocks to make a message scroll across the screen. The programming language we're using here is called Blockly and it's very similar to Scratch. It uses lots of blocks to connect together to make a program. The start block's already been placed for us and I want to add a scrolling message now. So I'm going to click on Sprite and then select the scroll sprite block and connect it underneath the start. I'm going to go back and click on Sprite this time selecting get string sprite and I'm going to connect it next to the scroll sprite section and here you can see there's a message that says hello world I'm going to change that and I can change that to any message I want so I'm going to have Merry Christmas scrolling across my code bug um, you can have any message you like press enter and then we're actually able to test to see if our code works by pressing the play button underneath the emulator of our code bug and you can see my message is working just fine it's always good practice to save the work that you've done so far so I'm going to click on save and this should save my project to my user account so I'm able to go back later and edit it. I'm going to change how it's seen on the web um, so it could be private, I'm going to keep this as unlisted and I'm also going to give my project a description. Now I want to add some functionality using the button. I want people to be able to walk up to my Christmas decoration, press a button and then the message to appear. So we need to start with a looping block that says repeat while true. So the whole time this loop is just going to keep going around waiting for the button press. Then I'm going to need a conditional block, an if condition, which I'm going to place inside the looping block. I then need to set a condition. So if, and in this case the button to be pressed, then do something. So if I click on inputs and outputs and select button A pressed and connect it like a jigsaw piece to the if part of the block. So now my code reads if button A pressed, do something. And I want it to scroll the message. So I'm just gonna use the blocks from the scrolling message and place them inside the conditional and then connect them all together. And the great thing with this is I'm able to test to see if this works by pressing play and then trying it out on the emulator. So if I click the A button, my message should now scroll across the screen. We have two buttons so it would be worthwhile to use both of them to do something different. So I'm going to add another conditional block, an if and then do. So I'm going to drag this onto the screen and place it inside the while loop. Then I'm going to click on inputs and select a button pressed block and connect it to the if. But this time, instead of it reading button A pressed, I'm going to change it to B pressed. And this time in the do section, I want to draw a sprite. And then I can use a build sprite block to actually draw a design. And you can see that this block has lots of cells, which I'm able to tick with my mouse. And that will turn on some of the LEDs in the LED array. So I'm going to try and draw a sort of Christmas tree with these blocks. All the time checking that my code works by pressing play on the emulator and then using the buttons on the emulated code bug. And I can see what my design kind of looks like. A Christmas tree. I want to add some animation to that Christmas tree so that the star flashes on the top. 
I'm going to add a pause to my code. So if I click on basics and use a pause for time, and this time is in milliseconds block, I'm just gonna connect it underneath. I then want to connect another draw sprite block, and I'm gonna duplicate my build sprite by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate, and then dragging it and connecting it. And that way I get exact copy of my picture, and if I just wanna change one of the cells by unticking it, I can. I'm going to add another pause for the same amount of time and then this whole section of my, my drawing I need to put inside a loop, a repeating loop. I want it to repeat five times so I end up with an animation of my tree light coming on and off. Sometimes it can be tricky to connect the blocks together but that's why it's always really helpful to be able to test your code in the emulator by pressing the play button. Once you've tested that it works and you're happy with your code, we're going to transfer it to the CodeBug device. You will need a USB to micro USB cable to connect your laptop or computer to the CodeBug. Make sure you plug in the USB end first, then press and hold the A button on the CodeBug when you connect the micro USB end. One of the LEDs on the code bug will then start to flash so you'll know that it's connected. And on your computer or laptop, if you go to your file manager, so that could be Finder if you're on a Mac, or it could be My Computer if you're on a Windows machine, you will see that your code bug is listed as a device. Download the code that you've already created by clicking on Download, and this will put it into your Downloads folder. And then what you need to do is drag and drop that file from your downloads onto the code bug. If this has been successful, another LED on your code bug will light up and you're able to test that your program works by pressing the A or B button. Disconnect your code bug from the micro USB cable and we're going to replace the power source with a battery. So I'm using one of these coin cell batteries and you just place it into the coin cell holder on the back and it's now powered and your program is stored on it. So if I press the A or B button, my program will work and you'll see my scrolling message. And that's how easy it is to program a code bug device. So what are you waiting for? Get your hands on one of these little devices today and then head over to Red Ted Art where you can see a video that will show you how you can turn what I've created here into a beautiful Christmas pudding bauble.